So we talked about something similar to what we're talking about right now. Not long ago, I think something like a couple days ago, a week ago, somewhere around there. But Alex Jones has been going after Joe Rogan. And he did it again because Joe Rogan the other day just had Twitter CEO and founder Jack Dorsey on. And um, conservatives don't like Jack Dorsey. In fact, I don't think there is really anybody who likes Jack Dorsey because there are people on the right who hate him because they say you're shadow banning people. And then there's on the left too because um, I just saw that they're taking down threads and suspending accounts exposing Kamala Harris and fakely calling them bots when they're real people responding to people and typing stuff out. So the truth is nobody likes Jack Dorsey because he's never able to do anything to please any of the sides. And so that like to dislike ratio is probably the craziest Joe Rogan like to dislike I've ever seen. And apparently it's so bad that Joe Rogan is deleting comments. Um, I believe it's 7k likes to 45k dislikes. Now, Alex Jones, the last time we talked about it, went after him, uh, went after Joe Rogan. He called him the deep state, and um, he's going to go after Joe Rogan again for this, and he's going to hit him pretty hard. He's going to call him a sellout. He's going to call his show stupid, and clearly, he has a deep desire to not attack Joe Rogan, but he's it's just been building up inside of him, so... There's a lot of footage here because he rants for like 30 minutes. He dedicates like 30 minutes of his show to just reaming on Joe Rogan. By the way, why does Alex Jones have that many fucking papers on his desk? First of all, it's 2019. Using papers is fine, but why do you have that many papers on your desk? Like a thousand papers. How much, how much ink are you using to print all that shit out? Anyways, um, there's going to be quite a bit of footage. I'm going to try to break up as much as I can to show you guys what he said, but he is there's really a lot there, so check it out. Now, let me get to this point. I'm not happy to have to attack Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is a very passionate, smart, um, charismatic guy. But Joe is highly driven and is really a dark person. And I think that comes from an insecurity complex of being from, you know, a poor family in Boston. Because you get smarter as you get older, you get wiser. And, and it's just the snapshots along the way. So I'm not attacking Joe Rogan because he had me on his podcast two years ago and it was the number one podcast he ever did, and then he, he won't have me back on. I, I thought it was an ideal place to address all the fake news against InfoWars and to speak the truth. And then he kept putting out establishment talking points in the last year and really attacking me with exact talking points. And then I found out he was sponsored by Jack Dorsey. And then I found out he was sponsored by George Soros. And we're going to get to that in a moment. This is really sad stuff. And, and you know, I learned about six months ago he was on the payroll. I mean, making more money than the Young Turks ever did. I mean, the Young Turks got something like $20 million from Qatar, Gulf State dictators. This is really creepy stuff. And so when he said George Soros was, you know, fought the Nazis, he's a hero in World War II, it was just like, man, that's really sick, okay? He was on 60 Minutes bragging he helped round up Jews. So I, I, I called Joe about four months ago and I said, listen, this is bigger than Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. It's like a Pilgrim's Progress or a, or a Tale of Two Cities. I said, listen, man, you don't have to have me on your stupid show. I, I, I don't care about getting on big platforms or I would have sold out. You know, they don't want to put you in big movies. They want to put me in big movies. I piss on Hollywood. I refuse their top contracts to be star in a damn movie because it's a sellout. Sure, I'd be big in movies. Sure, people watch me already. I, but I told him, I said, you run your mouth with George Soros talking points anymore. I'm coming after you because it shows you're working for them. He kept doing it. And then I got really depressed. Because I realized the only time I ever sold out in my life, strangely enough, because, I mean, I've known Joe for like 20 years. Crap, longer than that now. God. 
And I have this loyalty thing where it's not a sellout, but I'm like a dog. I'm so loyal that even though somebody's not my friend, I'm still loyal because they said they were. I'm having to learn, like, to not not do that when somebody them, them themselves isn't loyal or they go off the reservation. So I'll get to all this when we come back. This is going to take some time because this is a big thing here. This is a big deal. So the things I saw with Joe, the things I discovered about him, you know, things that other people would never know and things that I would never even go after him for. And then he's so confident, cozied up to Google, cozied up to Facebook, on the payroll of Jack Dorsey. I th word is, it's like a $300,000 contract a month, which I've got news about it right here. Why don't you disclose we've got our sponsor, Cash App and Bitcoin? Oh, see, Joe, see, Joe. See, I never took Bitcoin as an advertiser. Some of the radio stations I'm on have done it. Because I thought it was a pump and dump. I felt like it was a scam. Not, not that digital currency or cryptocurrencies are bad themselves, but the whole thing always smelled. And I knew the globalists and Soros were involved. So I turned down the million dollars a month two years ago when it hit its peak. But you didn't, did you, JoJo? And then you think you're going to sit there and attack free speech and piss all over America at the same time you pull this stuff and you've got a UT-approved research facility in Austin putting over 1,000 people a year through MK Ultra, and I've got all the names, the witnesses, the women, everything. And I knew this two years ago, but it was like so crazy. I was like not looking at it. I was just like, because I almost sold out for nothing. It's like Joe had me under a uh, spell or something. But I've never sold out. And so thank God, at the end of the day, I found redemption. Thank God. I didn't go back on Joe's show. I'd never want to talk to Joe. I never want to see that little demon. I never want to be associated with you. I don't want to be associated with selling out or failure. I just want to be away from you in L.A. and that whole leaking butthole that you are. Excuse my French. But that's the allegory that hits my brain. And it's not a hate of Joe. It's that a revulsion. I don't hate you, Joe. I'm revolted by you. See the difference? You revolt me. Jack Dorsey, that little oiled pimp, that little front man of DARPA up there like a rat, like a spider, cleaning its, 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 its pinchers. Ugh. You don't know the light because you were never in it. Thank God. People like Louis Gohmert looked at Sundar Pichai and he said, you wouldn't know the light because you've never been in it. And it's true. Of course, the enemy, when they launch their main attack, cannot be associated with me because that's who they're. We should all rejoice we're not on Twitter. We should rejoice we're not with Jack Dorsey, this fallen slave, this nothing. Look at him. He is a shish kebab for the devil. Just a little bite. Sold out for nothing. Another coward. And the good news is, when I come back, I'll get into all of it. Because now, their average video suddenly has eight to one dislikes and everyone's turning against them. And it's happening everywhere. They're the sinking ship. Humanity sees through them. The vision was true. The prophets were right. We win. They lose. All right. So in the next two segments, because it's a journey into the heart of big tech, Silicon Valley, the journey into the collapsing corporate media trying to reinvent itself with the Trojan horse that 
So he's gone from an average 90% vote to an average 8 to 1 vote against him. We can show that for TV viewers. If you're a radio listener on local stations and who's Joe Rogan, well, he, he, he's just a, he's Benedict Arnold. You heard about Benedict Arnold back in the Revolutionary War. You heard about Judas Iscariot. You've heard about traitors. So, I mean, I mean, it's important to look at them and understand who they are and just thank God we're not them. Because these are all these fake, you know, fake brave wannabe tough guys. They're not the crazy brave, they're the, they're the fake brave. And, and I'm not taking pleasure in it, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to stab hard. You know what I mean? So forgive some of the viciousness, but it just has to be done right. You know what I mean? So let's do it right now. 6.3K pro, 42K anti. Now, that was an hour ago. But you, 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 if you're a TV viewer, you see it live there on screen. Let's read some of these comments. Document cam shot, please. So here's the good news. No one is buying this now. Thousands of comments. I read like 100 earlier. During the, I scanned over. No one is supportive. Everyone sees directly through it. And that's the human algorithm. That's what's beautiful. But let me tell you the scandal. Joe Rogan, when he's up there pumping Bitcoin, that I told you eight years ago, is a scam and is a tulip mania bubble. Oh, a psychotic, a sociopath, a Satanist would say, Alex, you were dumb. You could have made $100 million. People say, well, that's a big number. No, we, we, we bring in $40 million a year, but half that's product costs and every expenses. It's not that much. Uh, BuzzFeed gets $300 million a year in profit, $100 million from Soros, and still can't make a profit. So people are like, oh, my God, $40 million. I don't need to support you. $40 million gross. <laughs> I'll explain this again. We have millions in bandwidth cost every quarter. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. My goal measuring my Johnson my spiritual Johnson is not how much money I make. It's how I take on the establishment and change the world. And for changing the world with our audience that took action, I salute you. We hit the zeitgeist, baby. We're trillionaires in God's eyes. So I'm not saying everybody involved in Bitcoin is bad. I'm not saying any of that. Right at the end, wanting a dead cat bounce. Here comes... Jack Dorsey, who actually is behind a lot of Bitcoin scams, and Joe Rogan's main sponsor. We have the press releases right here. They don't tell the viewers, though. They just go in there and they say, oh, yeah, I think Bitcoin's going to go back up. Oh, here's where you go invest. Oh, it's really great. Jack Dorsey doesn't even in the videos tell you he's the owner. This is totally illegal in Securities and Exchange Commission stuff. I mean, you all know about Martha Stewart. Somebody sold like $800,000 of stock. She didn't know about it. She didn't answer the question right. She spent four years in prison. But Joe Rogan's up there with his securities advertiser. Not telling you about that. But he's protected, see. He can be part owner in a big facility that has over 1,000 people here in Austin alone that take ayahuasca and other hallucinogenics. You don't think God doesn't create a signet, a symbol, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lives up a standard? <laughs> Everything's on the line. My family, my name, everything. I'll never submit to you. You've met your match. Get ready. Just get ready because you are going to pay now for everything you've done. And this window of Joe Rogan, my whole 20 years knowing him, now it's God's plan, opens up and I can see through the victory, the potentiality of what we're going to do. Oh, let's look at some more of these quotes. We'll come back and play some of the clips. Joe Rogan's podcast is sponsored by Cash App, which is true. Cash App is a product made by Square Inc. The founder and CEO of Square is Jack Dorsey. Not telling you he's there selling you a security on air because they think you're a dumb new ager on DMT. Gotta love how Jack never answered why Alex Jones was banned. Also love how Joe never asked Jack why celebrities and SJWs weren't banned after threatening the Covington's Catholic kids. 
Twitter and Facebook are the downfall of already dysfunctional society. These psycho run people's lives for a like and a moment of self-importance. Joe 2016 outspoken, opinionated. Joe 2019 cowardly, worried about Hollywood status. Read the thousands of comments. But most importantly, eight to one dislikes. Turn in the corner, aren't you, Joe? Shining on with the big boys, Joe. Circling the black hole of hell, Joe. I can't wait to bang heads with you. We'll be right back. I'm going to play some of these disgusting clips. Get to some more of these videos. Stay with us. I was going to be banned everywhere and decided to get more attention for a few weeks before he banned me. And then Joe wants to really kiss his ass because, you know, Jack Dorsey's paying him. The word is $300,000 a month, and Jack wants a major bump to get his viewers to sucker into Bitcoin that's already collapsed. Like, these suckers will buy a dead cat bounce. And, and Joe's like, really? Well, I'm going to... And so when he's looking at 10, 20 million a year, if, you know, he just scams his viewers, which he'll do. I mean, this isn't flashlights. This isn't all, no, no. This isn't ayahuasca cults. This is Bitcoin, baby. So Joe's like got his knife sharpened for his fans. He hates it. He's just sharpening it. Get that knife ready. So yeah, it's already, to a Satanist, it's even sweeter to sell him something totally failed, even when it's failed. It's just, oh, it's so sweet. So, Yeah, so like I said, there was a lot there. I found that he printed out pictures of comments on YouTube on paper. I thought that was unbelievably hilarious because, like, dude, what are you doing? Like, don't you have, like, an iPad or something to, like, scroll through the comments or maybe have screenshots or something like that? But anyways, um, this is a an interesting situation. I mean... Like I said, nobody really likes Jack Dorsey, the CEO who was interviewed by Joe Rogan. A lot of people were saying that uh, Joe Rogan basically gave like a weak interview. And the answer that he gave for, uh, I believe the answer Jack Dorsey gave for why Alex Jones was banned was saying that he didn't know. Like he didn't know the specific violations and he didn't know why. So it's like... Um, I, I don't know. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to really pin something down like that when that's sort of what he's answering with. But, um, Joe Rogan and Alex Jones clearly having an odd situation here. Supposedly, and this is from Alex Jones, Alex Jones has stated that, oh, hey, you know, Joe said that I was scheduled for this time. I believe it was in October. And I think it was on his website too. I'm not sure. I thought I remember it being on his website where he has the schedule for who's coming on on the podcast. And uh, he's, he claims that despite having that scheduled, uh, Joe Rogan afterwards never contacted him ever again. And so it's just kind of a, like, oh, he just, he basically just ghosted him is what he's saying. And in that uh, clip you guys just saw, that video, that long-ass video that, that Alex Jones was ranting on, um, he says that... Uh, you know, he says that Joe Rogan called him the day he was banned, and <laughs> he said, why, you're, why are you banned? And Alex seemed mad at what Joe Rogan was saying. And apparently, Alex and Joe have a long time history. I don't know. And Alex was throwing some uh, shots in there saying that he has, that Joe Rogan has an insecurity complex. Um, basically saying that, I, I guess, Joe Rogan has certain insecurity. I don't really, like, of all the explanations of something, I really don't understand that one. Someone can tell me what their theory is on that, on the insecurity complex of Joe Rogan. I don't see that one, and I, I really don't know how uh, that really plays into this whole thing. But this dynamic is really weird. Um, and I think Alex Jones is going to continue to pile on Joe Rogan every time that Joe Rogan mentions Alex Jones' name. I really don't have uh, all that much to say about this because Alex Jones is a lunatic, you know, piece of shit, obviously. So he's a joke and he's just a, a lunatic, absolute lunatic. But the fact that Joe Rogan jumped off the Alex Jones train only when he got banned, that's also like, okay, Joe, he is like, why are you? Then it's a fair question. It's like, okay, why did you jump off that train just when he got banned? Like, you were all aboard, you were all aboard that, that Alex Jones train when, you know, he wasn't banned. 
but then once he got banned, you jumped off the train. Like, why? Why is that? What happened? You know, could you explain that? That is a question that I can understand. And I think that it's because Joe Rogan has a brand. You know, he has a big ass YouTube channel. He doesn't want to end up like Alex Jones. So he can't really rock the boat in that way. I would be absolutely shocked if Joe Rogan were to ever have Alex Jones back on the podcast. I don't think he's going to end up having him back on the podcast. I really don't. Because this is a relationship that really does not seem like it could be mended at all. It doesn't look like there's a way for... I mean, I guess there is if Joe just apologizes to Alex. But I don't know how Alex really feels deep down inside. Because even though... And he gives conflicting messages when he's talking too. He'll go, he'll go, you know, oh, I don't hate Joe. And then he'll go, you know, his stupid show. And I don't want to go on your dumb show and all this. Hey, you're, you're a sellout, Joe Rogan. You're, you're on the payroll of George Soros. And that's not even like he said that. You're on the payroll of George Soros. And you're on the payroll of, uh, you know... Uh, Jack Dorsey and all this type of stuff, all these, and he has this weird, like, CIA conspiracy of, um, of, he has one of his that Joe Rogan was, uh, I don't know, implicated in or something like that, the dude's an absolute lunatic, he's absolutely off the, off the, you know, rails, off the hinges, everything, the dude is totally losing it, and, um, amongst losing all of those platforms that he was on, Spotify, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere, the App Store. He has also seemingly lost his friendship with Joe Rogan. Now, let me know your thoughts down below on this whole dynamic on Joe Rogan and Alex Jones, their friendship, what's happened, and just give me your overall thoughts on this because for me, it's just kind of like a sort of obvious set of events. You know, it's kind of like Joe Rogan rides the Alex Jones money train when he can use it without it rocking the boat too much. But as soon as he gets banned, he's got too big of an image to risk himself for that. And so he jumps off the Alex Jones train immediately. Um, and, you know, that's just what it seems like. And I don't think Joe Rogan really wants to associate himself with Alex Jones anymore. And I don't really see any other explanation for, you know, what Joe's done. And um, I think that from the perspective of a rational person and not an Alex Jones sycophantic fan, the question you could ask is, hey, Joe, why did you jump off the Alex Jones money train only after he got banned? Because he said that, in fact, most of the shitty stuff he said happened before he got banned and while you were on the Alex Jones money train. So, you know, how did you, you know, why did you jump off at that time that you jumped off? That's a good question, I think. So let me know your thoughts on this down below. And um, <laughs> I have an odd feeling this is not going to be the last video I'm going to be doing on this whole Alex Jones, Joe Rogan thing.